So now that we've got the rules of Psi out of the way, let's apply those rules to how a plant actually works. How a plant actually does what we said it would do, water and mineral uptake. And we'll entitle this next flowchart just that, but part two. Water and mineral uptake, part two. So we know the rules of Psi, we know how Psi works. Let's take that rule and idea and understanding of water potential and apply it. So our first application of it will be looking at the value of soil and specifically the soil psi value, the soil water potential. So let's look at two scenarios. Let's imagine that we have a scenario where the soil is extremely dry. What would you say about the water content if the soil is extremely dry? It doesn't have a lot of water. It would probably have a very little amount of solvent but probably also will have more solutes, lots of solutes. I'll say there's a little bit of water still in every single you know, piece of soil that you see, but it's just gonna be tons of solutes within it that are outweighing the, the water value there. Thus, if we have more solutes, we are looking at a very hypertonic soil, full of solutes. And for that reason here, what do we expect the psi value to be? The psi value here decreases. The psi value decreases because it is going to be a very low value. It is going to have a very low value that is going to be very, very negative in its number orientation, let's say, because the standard is zero. Pure water is zero. But if it's not pure water, if it has tons and solute, tons of solutes, then we're going more and more and more away from zero. On the other end, we're getting very negative, very low, because we're full of solutes, we're hypertonic, very, very dry soil. Now let's juxtapose this and switch this around and say, let's say we have a nice moist soil. Let's say the soil is equal to moist. When you see moist soil, you automatically know that there's more water there. But what you also know is that there aren't going to be as many solutes. There will be less solutes here because there's more solvent now and it's being dissolved. So there's less solutes. Thus, we now probably have a much more hypotonic soil. There's a lot more water here, a lot more solvent. And because there's more solvent, there's more water. And thus, here we have the psi value that increases. So our psi value increases as we have less and less solutes. And our psi value decreases as if when we have more and more solutes. So here, I would imagine that the psi value is definitely higher. Higher than what? Higher than an extremely dry soil. The moist soil has a higher psi value than dry soil. Very simple. And also, you would also say that it has a less negative value. Now again, I know that's confusing. Why don't you just say it has a positive value? Well, that's because the standard of water, the psi standard, is equal to zero. That's when there's pure water. And if there's just a little bit of solute, then we have to go below zero. But if there's a lot of solute, we have to go very below zero. But right now, we're not going very below zero. We're being less negative because we only have a little bit of solute. We have a hypotonic solution, pretty much all water except for a little bit here and there, and thus it's a moist soil, thus it is a hypotonic soil with an increased psi value. Now, moving forward, that's in our soil. What about the root? The root psi value. So now we have a root that's usually right next to the soil, right? Right next to it for absorption. What's going to happen here? Here, what we expect is that the psi value will be negative. The psi value is negative because of the following reason. The psi value is negative because of dissolved solutes that are present within that soil. So the soil, let's say it's moist, okay? Let's say this is the situation I'm talking about. Moist soil will have some solutes that are dissolved within it, and those solutes will be absorbed in the water, from the water. And that absorbed H2O, of course, will have a negative psi value. Why is that? Well, that's because it's not pure H2O. It has some solutes, not a lot, just a little bit, still some, thus it will have a negative value that will be absorbed into the root from the root hairs, let's say, all the way through the different layers of the root. Now, this is a very simplified way of looking at it. Let's look at the mechanism now, the actual way that we see water move throughout the plant. Specifically, we'll say the movement of H2O and apply the psi knowledge of the soil, root, and uh, the rules of psi. It's very simple, okay? So, what we have is the following. Let's say we have dry soil, okay? So, in dry soil, I'm going to tell you the following. The soil, it has, it's equal to 
a high solute concentration. Now, if you remember, the abbreviation for concentration is these brackets. So whenever we put brackets around the word, we're saying the solute concentration. Solute concentra concentration in dry soil is high. Therefore, we will say that the soil is hypertonic because it's full of solutes, but hypertonicity is always in reference to something. It's relative to the root. The root has less solutes, it has more solvents, it's a hypotonic root, and the soil is hypertonic. So now, what's going to happen here? Why do we have to water plants, essentially? Well, that's because the, the water itself does not move into the root, okay? Water does not, does not move into root from soil. Go back to the rules of Psi. Why would it do that? The soil has a very, 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 very low Psi value because it's full of solutes and it's very, very hypertonic and we have to always go hypotonic to hypertonic, right? We have to transfer the water. Right now, are we transferring any water? No, because we don't have any water to transfer. The soil is full of these solutes, it's hypertonic. We would be breaking the rule of Psi of doing what I just said. So now, we're not gonna have any water movement. Look at this when we do have water movement in the sense that we have moist soil. This will make a lot more sense when we sort of now summarize the idea in moist soil. In moist soil, the story is a little bit different. Here, what we have are roots with more. So this time, the roots are going to be in the situation where they have more dissolved, let me rewrite that, more dissolved solutes than the soil water. Let me rewrite solutes than soil water. Why is that? Well, right now, the soil is moist. You've just watered your plant, let's say. You water the plant at the soil region, right? You don't just throw water on top of the plant. Now, that soil is full of water, has some solutes, whereas the root now is going to have even more solutes than the soil does. So now we've established sort of a difference between the moist soil and dry soil. A difference in terms of the root versus the soil, and the soil versus the root in terms of the tonicity, how much solute is in each. So what do we say here? So this is a little bit confusing. It's good to summarize it like this. Now we simply have a situation where the roots are now, they are hypertonic. The roots are hypertonic now, so now they are going to have a low root psi. They have a lower root psi. So that psi value is lower versus the high psi soil value. So the soil has a high so psi value. Why is that? Well, it has lots of water. It's moist. And so what we always have to do is go from high to low, right? High soil high soil psi water content is going to move towards the root. This is how plants get their water essentially. Because we have this, this difference between the soil water and the root, let's say water content or psi value, better term, what's going to happen? We're going to follow the rules of psi and have water move. Water moves into the root. It moves into the root. Why does it move into the root? Well, we're going from a higher psi value in the soil to a lower psi value in the root, and that's a rule of psi that we're following. Water moves into root from soil, and then we always use a nice transport term via osmosis. The movement of water without any energy would be through osmosis. How are we going to do that? That's going to be at the root hairs um, with that anatomy that we saw. This is quite confusing when you first look at it because there's these weird terms of psi, solute, hypertonic, hypotonic, high, so, high psi value, low psi value, more negative, less negative. I think the best way to look at this is obviously a figure, and that would be figure 36.7. Take a look at it. Look at it as you go through this flowchart. Look at this figure when you complete this flowchart and the previous flowchart and understand both. 
It can be quite confusing at first, but trust me, it's intuitive. This is how plants work. We water soil because the soil now has a high psi value. It's going to be in relation to the root, which has now a lower psi value because there's all this water in the soil. What does the root want to do? Take all that water from the soil. How does it do that? It follows the rules of psi, and that's water and mineral uptake.